kind of tell it's a little noisy. They're all noisy actually. Then we got one down here that's not running, which I don't know. It might be a thermostat. It's definitely noisy. Gotta love that. Hopefully they got disconnected here. Check that one there. It's working, so at least the fan's good. It's just not calling for it. We're gonna need to get that power killed so I can check linkage. I mean, otherwise I'd have to pull fuses, which is not really the way I want it. They couldn't find the key, so they were going to chop it off, so they let me play with my new toy. They cut it right off in a heartbeat. Here's what I found so far. You can rock this thing back and forth. So that's not good. The other ones seem like they're pretty, pretty solid. Don't see any blades that are loose or broke. And all the brackets feel pretty tight. Then there's some heavy duty blades there. A lot better than what they put on the rooftop units, that's for sure. But yeah, it's definitely got. You can hear it. All right, so I went over there and checked the full uh, load amps on the motor at 460, which this is running 491, 492. The one motor that's fairly quiet, you can see it, it'll drop down there. I mean, that's close enough. You can tell it's pretty quiet. Here's the one in the middle. This one here was a little noisier, but the amperage wasn't too horrible. But the amperage was still, you know, still in good, but you can tell those bearings are dry. And then when you go to this one, this little piggy wants to go home. As you can tell, that one's not only noisy because the bearings are going out of it, but it's also pulling higher amperage because of it. So you shouldn't do what I did. I use an insulated screwdriver, so crucify me later. So anyhow, that's uh, what we got going on. Sounds to me, uh, they definitely need to change this first motor. The second motor, I'm gonna recommend they do it while we got it out going, because you can tell it's making noise. Um, it may be another year before it goes out, but we're dealing with product here, so the price of motor usually is not uh, a big deal when you're talking about the product cost if something goes down. So I'm going to get the authorization on that. And then uh, he had some things he wanted me to check down there on the other condensers that don't run very much. So I did a temporary wire job here. Normally the motor closest to the incoming part of the manifold or the condenser coil always runs and they'll cycle the last after one then they'll cycle each every one after that potentially, but they'll always usually keep the first one running. I went ahead and switched the first one and the third one opposite of each other to keep that one from running. Yet it's still hooked up. If the pressure gets high enough, it'll come on like the one on the end would have normally came on. You can tell the humongo difference. But we got one in stock, so I'm going to go get it, but this will at least get it back up and going. Even if they didn't have one in stock, this would at least make this thing not run as much. And with it being cooler out here, not such a big deal. Sight glass so far is full, but they just came on. We gotta look at the other condensers down there. They're smaller and they don't run as much as this one. So we gotta check to see if the temperatures are uh, not set the same or what the story is. We went ahead and picked up our new motor and I'm back. So I got the contactors switched back to the way they were. Got our new motor down there ready to go. And I've got one of our set screws out, but when I got to this last one here, the old wrench isn't doing so well. I can see the threads not turning. 
and we'll try to heat that thing up and see if we can get it out of there. I'm gonna cheat and try my hand torch first, which probably won't get it hot enough, but I'm gonna try that first, and if not, I'll have to get the uh, acetylene torch. I didn't think it was gonna work, but uh, I just kept on turning, figured uh, we'll see what happens. And sure enough, she broke loose. Now I'll probably go ahead and stick just a regular bolt or whatever I can get in there. Because you can see those threads, if you get close enough to it, there you can see they turn funny as you're turning it. Yeah, so there you go. Now let's see if we can pull this thing off. I've got mixed feelings on this thing. It seemed like it was really great in the beginning, but I'm having my lingering doubts since then. These little set screws instead of nice big bolts. Not uh, not as happy with it as what I first thought I would be. Let me get this thing sized up, which looks like that one's it. Now, I will say before I left, I sprayed that, uh, and then put it on defrost and uh, pushed it to the very, pushed it. Okay, washed, pushed. Those are two of my words. So I set the defrost so that uh, it would start about 10 minutes after it soaked for a while and then start back up again. So on this one here, we're gonna have to be careful. We've got, uh, the wires look like they're ate up, but mainly it's just the uh, outer jacket of the uh, shiny part. So, otherwise they look pretty good shape. There are no cracks in the actual vinyl. So we get that done. Uh, you can feel the heat. It's hot enough. I don't want to touch that thing. It's uh, definitely hot. All right, so it's 460 volt. I wanted to make sure that it was set correctly, which these are the real easy plug. Just yank it and switch it. Usually they come on high voltage, but I wanted to make certain that it was. And uh, get the plug out of there. Good to go there. This has a really nice plate that makes it so easy to get in there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get this thing mounted up here in a second. Just got to get this other one unwired yet. Ew. That plug isn't looking so healthy, is it? Nope. So they put like a, looks like a zip screw, but it's not. But it's a little pin basically to hold the motor in place while you get it pinned back into place with the bolts. So it's kind of unique. I had to give it a little bit of a yank, which bowed a little bit of that there, but they popped off, which is good. I did uh, put a little electrical tape on that there because the uh, little sheath thing they had on there is no good. So I went ahead and put that on there and it gives a little extra protection. That's a real fine thread. I didn't have any bolts that would match that. So I'm gonna put it on this key side since it's not really doing much more than holding the key there. And then uh, the other one here is the one that was better. It's gonna hold it mainly against the shaft there. Still gotta tighten up these nuts on the uh, motor yet mounting. So we got those tightened up down there. Went ahead and used number three setting on that impact. It broke them loose, so I figured it should be able to make them tight enough. But we'll double check them with the wrench just to make certain. Got plenty of clearance all the way around. 
We're going to verify rotation and uh, we should be good to go here in just a second. All right, so these are the evaporators that it goes to here, here, and those two over there. So we got one here that is missing a fan motor and he was curious about why the temperatures seem like they're not uh, the same. So we're kind of checking to see what, uh, what this one's set at versus the ones up towards the dock. It just doesn't seem to run the same, so that's what I'm checking now. Alright, so this motor has been out for a while, so I just got the numbers off of this one here, so we have something to compare it to, along with the model number, serial number of this evaporator. You can kind of see how big these are, they're decent size. But that one condenser does all four of these evaporators, whereas the other condensers I've got, one does two there and the other one does two of them over there which we're going to go over there and compare those thermostats now. The number one is the one that was looking a little bit low. I guess we already fixed the leak on number two. That don't look very good. No sir, not at all. No time to do much with it today though. Got other calls I gotta run. Three days later. All right, we're back. I got the motor changed down there, so that's the number two motor. And right now we're adding some refrigerant to this one here. You can see she looks like she's a little low there. So I'm gonna check these canisters. Definitely, you can see the oil. It might be old. I ain't sure yet. But we're hooked on there and getting her in. Turn the job on that. See what it takes to uh, clear it up and we'll start looking, which we're pretty late in the day, so we'll probably not do the full search today. Getting better. I thought we were clearing up for a minute there, but it's not. It's windy your hell out here today. Just about emptied out that jug. 23 pounds area, so I need to throw a little bit more in here in a second. We've added four pounds of that plus the 23 and a half. So so far we just hit solid for a little bit. I'm sure it'll flash off, and we're only running two out of three fans. So we do know what the total charge is, so maybe we can kind of calculate what the extra would be here. <clears throat> little, little hard to determine exactly. Depending on how they calculated it originally, at 159 pounds, if you took 15% of that off there, I could, you could kind of calculate that's what it would be. And see, we're still flashing, actually think it's solid. A little sneaky peek it likes to do. TXVs are probably adjusting now that they finally got liquid solid strand uh, stream of it. It's a little on the cooler side today too. It's 48 degrees. So but you can see she's a blowing pretty good. Got a pop off release valve here, so if it gets too high pressure, you just blow the whole charge out. Isn't that awesome? That's what you get on the big systems. Did find a leak. Over here on the receiver or on the uh, filter dryer. So we get in here and it's so we got something going on there. Something going on down in here. So we go into mode here, go to parts per million. See what kind of thing we get, which it's windier and pretty it's really windy out here. size leak even with it as windy out here so it looks to me let's give her old soap a dope I uh, scanned some of the hoses up there and the flare fittings and stuff and nothing really much on any of that nothing on any of the uh, high side stuff here the low sides in a pump down so you ain't got any refrigerant really in there but um, the evaporator section is probably where my majority of my leaks are at. But we're going to go ahead and uh, 
stop here today. I'm gonna soap it real quick. So we got our blue bubble agent here. I believe we use new Calgon. I would rather have big blue. Uh, that's what I've always grown up with. So let's uh, soap this turd down here and see what we got going on. Will it do its thing here? To six days later. All right, I didn't figure I'd find much on this one here. On these larger coils, I think it's kind of interesting. They put a gap in between the copper and the aluminum, which you don't see so much on your smaller equipment. And a lot of times, obviously, that's where we get a lot of our leaks at. So um, there's a few spots here that don't have that, but for the most part, good portion of it has it and they definitely have it out there in the condenser so I scanned this side and a little bit that what I can get a hold of right here uh, I'm going to head over to the other side most likely it's going to be on the solder joints there um, we've got all this line going across that we could have to look at but we're going to start with the obvious stuff first and then uh, work our way across we got a truck getting delivered so probably aren't going to be able to get to that fur our uh, condenser over there which wouldn't surprise me it'll end up being where it'll be at so that's uh, the plan Stan. Alright I want to check here which I already did nothing there you can put a little poke in the insulation nothing there that's a line to go up the wall on the inside they had a refrigerant stem on the high pressure side there at the TXV could have been on that didn't pick nothing up on it when it was static um, when I took the cap off, it went in berserk. Uh, sprayed it with the cap off, didn't bubble. So the only place I found a leak was on the filter dryer out there. So that's liquid. It leaks the fastest. It's possibly the only place. So it might have been a long time for it. So I don't know. Okay. So like I said, this was the only place I picked anything up. Let's see if we get anything today with it being colder. Looks over here on this back corner. So it's still there. It's the only place I'm getting it. So I'm gonna tighten that up, see if it stops. Hopefully that might uh, fix it. If not, I'll take the stupid thing apart. All right, you're gonna laugh, but for curiosity's sake, I put a torque wrench on there. It's a cheapie, but started about 30 pounds took it up to about 32 is about as most I can get without feeling a little leery of it I don't know what these are rated for I forget but I did get some turns out of these two or so here on this top corner where it was leaking at and uh, we're still on super and uh, I'm not picking anything up now Nothing on that little square head there. Seen those leak a few times for sure. So, from what I'm seeing, that's, yeah, we were picking up pretty big time around that filter dryer there when it was warmer. Granted, it's not running right now. We'll, uh, Check it once it's running again, put a little more pressure on it. But I didn't get anything on any of that. Check through all these flex connectors. I've already done gone through all this here. So I'll scan this again because I've had plenty of them around that. Fitting on there. Yep, so. Well, that was the only place I had it before. And I'm not picking up anything now, so. Well, I'm gonna run it for a bit, make sure this thing stays solid. Might add that additional pound or two that I need to do, which actually is probably about 10, but we'll uh, kind of go from there. I think I had my markings here. Snow here is kind of screwing things up a little bit. There it is. Yeah, 29 and a half to full. Added about eight additional, put me about 38, so. We'll, uh, 
calculate it up again. I forget exactly what it was going to take. But uh, to make sure that I had enough pressure too, because like I said, I kicked on the uh, solenoid, got the pressure come up to where she'd kick on, shut her off. I'm going to throttle this thing down on the suction side just in case so I can get a bunch of liquid flood back to the uh, compressor. Oil looks like it's starting to come up a little bit too. If you remember when I was here last time, it was barely in the sight glass, so it's uh, the bottom third there. As you can see, that foaming action there is liquid coming back, which will wash your oil out, which is why I cut that off quite a bit. I'm gonna get me a half inch to half inch to make it a little easier. So I'm gonna throttle that some more. I got the suction pressure down quite a bit to help keep that from happening. And uh, I'll open that up once we kind of get stabilized. It does have an accumulator. Whether or not it needs it or not needs me to do that, I'm just doing it as a precaution just in case, because like you see, solenoid's way back here, so that's a lot of liquid that got into the system for it to get that pressure, but really don't see how you could have done it any other way. I gotta have some pressure in there, and I surely ain't gonna use nitrogen. Alright, that makes me look a lot better. It makes me feel a lot better, I should say. That's halfway marked. Don't see foam in there. I almost wonder if it's got an oil return issue. If that little wheat pole they got in there is possibly not letting it through, maybe all that liquid coming through washes up and out. I don't know. It's uh, sure is peculiar that our oil level is so high now, and it wasn't before. This one hasn't hardly been running. You can see it's about the same area. So that's kind of interesting. So that's basically where we're at, guys. So I'm going to wrap this thing up. That'll basically wrap up replacing the motor, adding some refrigerant, and then double checking all my contactors and stuff like that. So if you guys like the video and you'll see more like it, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe until next time we'll catch you on the next one